The holidays came early this year for Marvel Snap, and I'm here to spread a little holiday cheer, but also let you know that we finally got the series drop we've all been waiting for. For those new to the Snap scene, Second Dinner said that they were going to be doing series drops pretty regularly. And they were doing that for a while, and eventually it kind of petered out. The last time we actually saw a series drop was back in July of 2023. But now, as of today, we're getting the final drop of the year. Something that the devs also mentioned was that they are still going to be doing these series drops in 2024 a couple more times. They want to be able to create these big moments for players to acquire all these cards and enjoy them. One final note, Second Dinner has said they want every card that is eligible to be available from some of these spotlight caches. So this is, again, just more options for people to be able to pick up cards in another way. So let's start getting into those deck lists. With all the data that we have right now, I want to show you the best decks that some of these new cards pair with. All the deck data is set from untapped, by 100 uh, rank infinite players or higher, 3,000 collection level, and at least 100 games of data sample size from the past two weeks. First up is our Series 3 cards that were previously Series 4, and to start it all off, we're gonna go with Spider-Man 2099. Every time I do one of these lists, I'm just going to start from the lowest priority card that I think is probably what you should go with all the way to the end, which would be the highest priority. And this one is the lowest on the list right now. What is there to say right now about 2099? It's just... It is not the most effective card. And it really wasn't in previous metas either. If I were to recommend anyone who could make 2099 work, it's Molt. Molt is your move connoisseur and I would highly recommend checking out their stream to see how any type of move deck would work. There's only one recipe right now on untapped that is putting up solid numbers but it takes just a lot to make this card work right now. Speaking of molt and move, next we've got Stegron. It recently just got a one power buff in this last patch but I'd say not the most prominent card in the meta still but Molt is your man again to see utilizing a card like this in anything that is move. Uh, this deck can still create havoc and keep your opponent on their toes doing math on where things will end up, or it will completely lose you the game. <laughs> Have you ever dreamed this man? Well, if you haven't, you will be having dreams of this card, and honestly, the deck archetype it will either haunt your dreams or you will just have a ton of fun trolling your opponent. What was originally used, Mold, in Moldem and Foldem from Dara, which was an incredibly fun deck, we now have this deck right here that uses Mold, Mordo, and Ronin Control, which has me wondering, are we starting to see more of a future for this card right now, since Control is so prominent? I really like this one, and I highly recommend this one as kind of like a lukewarm pickup. There was a time when Stature, Black Bolt, Darkhawk was like the creme de la creme of a season many, many months ago. But that has since passed, since we now have Blob in the meta. Darkhawk has fallen off quite a bit, but you can still find Stature and Black Bolt together in a deck like this one, only this time you actually have it in the shell with Annihilus. Anything with discard, I feel like Stature is actually a pretty close second or third pickup for this series collection. Finally, this right now for Series 3, this new Series 3 one is the one to buy. If you have to get any other card right now, this is probably your top pick. It is extremely flexible. Negasonic Teenage Warhead is good in Silver Surfer right now. It's good at control. I, I highly recommend it. I just picked it up myself and have been seeing a lot of use with it. And I think you're going to have a lot of fun as well when you blow up your opponent's cards. All right, now we're getting into the even more expensive, elusive cards. Series five, now going down to series four. And we're gonna start it off with... Ah, man. It is still way too expensive. Howard just... 
isn't great right now, but if you wanted to see the best deck they are in right now, it's actually a Tribunal deck, surprisingly enough. Guess that gives you an advantage of leaving really early when you can't find your cards, huh? I'm gonna break my rule here and only showing 100 game sample sizes for this. Uh, I really like Hitmonkey and used it quite a bit, and it was a terror with bounce. But the times, they are a change in it. With this deck, I really think this can go the mile. With the recently changed Luke Cage rework, I think this deck is incredible in dealing with all the Shadow Kings of the world, and a Hitmonkey can still shine on turn 6 post Sarah. Got problems with ongoing? Want to have a really, really cheap way to counter all of those and contribute to your control decks? This is the card for you. Echo is a perfect addition to your collection, honestly, and in this shell of one of the most popular decks that's going on this week, I think you're going to have a great time. Next up we have Dakin, and he's in the middle of the priority list right now, a little bit lukewarm. Though you can combo with them and put out some decent power, Shadow King is popular in this meta and does a lot to dampen your fun. Right now, in this Sarah Surfer deck that we've got shown here, you can still do quite a bit of damage and overwhelm your opponent on turn 6, as long as you don't have priority, and honestly most Sarah decks do not have that. I wanted to feature both of these in the same deck actually, because right now they kind of go hand in hand. Phoenix Force requires a destroy archetype to work. Ghost Spider gives the copied multiple man that is destroyed an extra pull and duplication as you continue to move around all locations in the game. Though Phoenix is more limited, Ghost Spider has also worked in other decks as well, like Doc Ock. When I think of Kitty, I, well, I used to think of Bounce, but these days, we've been seeing her more with Elsa and in this archetype, we've actually been seeing her used in move. Check out this strong deck with a newly empowered arrow from the recent patch. Kitty used to be played in several decks, but has since cooled down a little bit. Still, a very strong card to have at your disposal and in a deck here that puts out some big numbers. There is one player that I know that loves playing Destroy, and his name is Tucker. <laughs> This man will show you incredible things with the Destroy archetype, and I would be remiss if I didn't include him with some of the other streamers I've shouted out inside of this video. With more junk and clutter decks kind of filling out the meta right now because Annihilus has been incorporated into the game, uh, Lady Deathstrike does amazing work on clearing lanes and important, weak, ongoing cards your opponents will try to play. This is one of the best decks to use her in, and also remember, Kyera is coming. Do you want a good counter to that? A preemptive sleeper pick, perhaps? I think this is probably one of my top picks if you don't have it because this is kind of future-proofing and preparing for some of the meta that is going to be coming. All right, all right, all right, this is my bias. So, I made a video and I'm probably gonna try and like feature it somewhere here on the screen. I've never done it before, but I'll try and make it pop up or something. But I I play Hella a lot. I play Discard a lot. And this number one pick for me is kind of coming in the form of why you should buy it. It's that it's incredible in Discard in every way. It's just, it's so fun and it is so effective in what it does. Being able to put out a really strong card that could synergize with your deck, removing a card that could be brought back to life with Ghost Rider with Hella, and removing one of your opponent's cards that they should be using for a combo on turn four, or just saving it just in case as like a reaction, and you get to pick it off. It's so good. And this deck right now that I'm recommending on the screen, one of the best decks that there is, honestly. And this one was used to climb to rank 20. The person who utilized this deck and introduced it to me was Husky Puppies, one of the best players in the world right now. They were ranked 20 recently using only this deck, but I, I highly recommend it. I think you will have a lot of fun while simultaneously climbing. Not the best climbing, but you will be having fun and you should still be climbing.
with more cards available to you during the holidays right now, just remember that there is still going to be more series drops in 2024. Stay on the lookout for more in the coming months. I hope to see all of you on stream, and if I don't see you there, I'll see you on here. Happy holidays.